one of the best giveaways of the year. That's right, brought to you by the folks at Turkey Hill. It's the Phil's warm-up top, and all the youngsters coming to the ballpark tonight not only get a chance to enjoy a little baseball and all the festivities around the ballpark, but they get a great giveaway. It's Weekends with Schmidt, presented by Acme Market. So come on into the ballpark for the Phil's and the Nationals. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom McCarthy, joined by Matt Stairs and Mike Schmidt. Michael, welcome to the telecast this year. Hi, uh, thank you, sir. And it's uh, wonderful to be back. We must have done something right last year to get invited <laughs> back. Uh, weekends with Schmidt, exciting thing. I had a wonderful spring training with all these young guys. Uh, and when I landed yesterday, uh, I felt a buzz in the city already about this ball club. Now, we weren't expecting the game that we had last night. No. But there was a nice buzz. And I'm looking forward to a year of uh, reporting on these guys and uh, getting to know them better and winning some ball games. Well, one of the things we do know is that Pete McCannon is not afraid of making changes, and he's already made his first change as we look at tonight's starting lineup. Darren Ruff will make the start in left field. Matt, it's something that he told us might happen sooner rather than later. Well, it happens sooner because if you look at the numbers with our corner outfielders, we have one home run and two RBI, so you need to get Darren Ruff in there, give him an opportunity to get some quality at bats, four or five at bats per game, and let him go out there for about a week and see how he does. He has eight at bats this year. Yeah, he was bummed with a little bad shoulder. Ryan Harris was playing the bat very well, playing first base. But you need that presence in the lineup to have that thunder for a guy that in the late innings might be able to, for one swing, turn the uh, outcome of a game around. Well, Pete said he needs an infusion of offense. So that's why he's decided to make the change. We'll see if it's effective. He's going to get a chance to play tonight and most likely tomorrow over at first base. It's a tough customer tonight for the Phils and Max Scherzer making his third start of the season. Aaron Nola hasn't walked anybody yet. He's also making his third start of the season. He faced the Nationals twice last season. Well, weekends with Schmidt presented by Acme Markets. We'll get a chance to see Ryan Howard continue to climb up the home run chart. He's tied with Jolt and Joe. Joe DiMaggio lineups in first pitch when we come back. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Xfinity. Xfinity X1 will change the way you experience TV. By Toyota. Toyota's hybrid fleet is nothing short of a home run. Visit your local Toyota dealer today. By Citizens Bank. The next time you have a question about money, don't keep it to yourself. Ask a citizen. By Coca-Cola, the official soft drink of the Phillies. And by Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless. Learn more at IBX.com.
Turkey Hill kids opening night here at Citizens Bank Park. What does that mean? Well, it means that Freddie Nukes will walk the lineup card out with Mickey Morandini. And he will hand it over to the home plate umpire, Kerwin Danley. And Joe West says, hey, let's take a picture. So he decides to lift him up. That's going to make that young man's not only his day, his night, but probably his weekend and his month. And here comes Aaron Nola. Speaking of kids, the 22 year old from Baton Rouge taking the hill tonight for the third time in his career against the Washington Nationals. Let's take a look at the Nats lineup brought to you by Xfinity. Xfinity X1 will change the way you experience TV. It's the same lineup as last night, except for the pitcher, Max Scherzer. So Taylor, Rendon, and Harper, followed by Zimmerman, Murphy, and Worth, and then Ramos, Espinosa, and Scherzer. They will face the uh, right hander. Aaron Nola and he'll have to deal with Jason Worth and his numbers here at Citizens Bank Park. Nola 0 and 1 is earned run average 3.21 17 strikeouts Zippo as far as walks go and Matt that says one thing it says that he is around the strike zone the entire day. Well he, as you know he's going to throw a lot of strikes doesn't throw a lot of balls out of the zone. Take a look at the scouting report. Three pitch pitcher he will top it at 94 miles an hour. He's still working on his changeup. It's been hit hard, pretty hard, the first two outings. But his curveball, the league's hitting a buck 43, and the fastball is hitting a buck 85. When he is dotting that fastball low and away versus right handers, it is pretty much unhittable. Let's take a look at our Nissan keys to tonight's ball game, and Michael, we'll begin with you. Tommy, my key's pretty simple. Uh, the guys need to have a short memory. Uh, when you lose a game like you did last night, you're a young team like this. The next night becomes very important. The next game, do you have a short memory? Can you start over and not let it happen again? No, it's a great key. And my key tonight is to uh, make Bryce Harper beat you to, to uh, actually, I made a mistake. It should be the left field, not right field. <laughs> last year, he hit all those balls to right, or last night, and the four home runs he's hit this year has been to right field. I want to see him try to beat you to the left field. Left well, center. how about him not beating us at all, bro? Well, I had, I had actually, had my first key was walk him. Well, we're better already tonight than we were last night. The first swing is a swing and miss. Well, Michael Taylor homered in last night's first inning, and uh, he set the tone for these Nationals. Overall, hitting 171. And Noah ties him up a little bit. One ball, one strike. Yeah, that pitch right there already shows me something that, that you know, I, I don't think uh, Jeremy Hellickson did enough last night, and that was throw the ball off the plate inside. If you even if you have to move the hitters a little bit, and you know, it just pitches like that set the other stuff up. Guys were too comfortable up there last night. Well, in that first inning, and Matt, you pointed it out, they it looked like they knew it was coming from the get-go. Yeah. That's how comfortable they looked. Two balls and one strike to Taylor. A bit low, and it's three and one. You know, no, that's no disrespect to Jeremy. I mean, w when you're giving up hits and the team is having a good night hitting, sometimes it just kind of looks like you know it's coming. They don't, believe me. They just had a good night hitting, and we didn't do anything to really offset that. Outside. And there's a walk, <laughs> which is the you first fanged him. He did <laughs> first walk of the year issued by Aaron Nola. I'd like to say though that a couple of those pitches were close. They were balls, but a couple of them were close. I thought Michael Taylor might swing at a few of those. Here's Anthony Rendon. Rendon was one for five in yesterday's game with a run scored. He's starting to compile some numbers against the Phillies. In the short time he's been up in the big leagues, you see seven home runs, 25 runs batted in. Have to admit, I'm a little surprised the Nationals changed their uniforms tonight after having such an effective day yesterday. They got the red tops on today. It's all about the starting pitcher. He has the choice of what you wear for that game. All right. Good. Yep. If he wants to wear the red, I don't think anyone's going to question if Max wants to wear the red tonight. Dusty Baker doesn't care. He's going to wear the sweatshirt anyway. Does he have the wristbands on? He's got the wristbands underneath the, the sweatshirt. And the toothpick. That one's lined into left field of base hit. Darren Ruff will cut it off at the warning track. Rendon stops it first. Mm. And over to third goes Taylor. Rendon could have kept on going to second base because Darren was looking to third the whole way. Well, Bryce Harper's coming up with runners on first and third. Murph, take it away, buddy. 
Well, Tom, this is uh, really the exact situation the Phillies did not want to find themselves in. Uh, Matt, you talked about it in your keys. You, this is just the, simply the guy in this lineup you don't want to let beat you. He's a 282 uh, lifetime hitter against the Phillies with 13 home runs and 31 RBIs. But how about this? In his last four games at Citizens Bank Park, he is batting 588. He has a home run in each one of those games, and all four of those games have been multi-hit games as well. He is red hot here at Citizens Bank Park, and he is red hot, uh, uh, well, just about everybody, against everybody across the league right now. Bryce Harper is that kind of hitter. Yeah, 11 RBIs in nine games for the Nationals. Phillies will concede a run to try to turn two. And a good pitch on the inner half. Uh, it's 0 and 1 to Harper. If we could back up to that uh, base hit by Rendon to left field, uh, obviously Darren should have, or yeah, Ruff should have thrown the ball to second base to prevent him from going to second. As you said, Tommy, he could have gone to second, and you know, and you know what? That might have been the best thing to happen to us. <laughs> Absolutely. Fly ball to short left field. Taylor's going to tag. Ruff is under it. He'll settle and throw. Oh, he dropped the ball. It was in the exchange. The out is recorded. A run will score, and Rendon goes to second. And it's one nothing Washington. Well, that's when you know you're going good, Matt. You hit a short fly ball to left field. He has no way he should have been able to score on that ball. Darren ends up dropping the ball on the throw. He gets an RBI, number 12 on the year, and the runner moves up from first to second. Now, that's a it almost looked like Darren was lined up to throw to the pitcher. Like it almost like he was in between. He's looking at the runner. You can see he's struggling with the exchange, and unfortunately, this is his first game out there this year and in spring training. That ball will find you, won't it? Absolutely. Oh, it has found him twice already, and Zimmerman takes a strike. It's 0 and 1. Boy, I think Taylor, I know he was trying to draw the throw, but he almost looked like he was going no matter what happened. Oh, he there. was. Guarantee he was going. The ball's one strike to Zimmerman. Zimmerman was one for four in last night's game, and he hits it back toward the middle of base hit. Rounding third, heading for home is Rendon. Now the Nationals take a 2 0 lead. So they pick up tonight right where they left off in last night's ball game. And that was an ideal, the exact same base hit he got his first time up last night. Ground ball to the left of the shortstop. These guys aren't missing. You know they aren't missing fastballs no, right now. For they're sure. not. They're swinging the bat well. And unfortunately, with the air in left field, and Rendon being able to go to second base, now you're not playing the double play depth where you're not playing closer towards second base. You never know. That might have been a ball Freddie could have got to. Could have, yeah. With the man on first base. National saw National saw a nice lineup at you. You, you. you gave the lineup earlier. You know, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. All the way down and Jason Worth, who was a cleanup hitter, three hole hitter for him in the past. He's in sixth. Well, Daniel Murphy is leading the National League in hitting, at least at this point in the season. Hitting a cool 464. By the way, that RBI for Zimmerman is just his second RBI of the season. Mentioned yesterday, this is not a Nationals team that was lighting a fire offensively coming into the series. You know, six of their wins were against the Atlanta Braves, uh, but there were some guys that were really struggling. I mean, not Murphy, not Ramos, but from a production standpoint, not Harper, but from production standpoint, right. Taylor, Worth, Rendon, Zimmerman. But let's remember, though, the only way Zimmerman. Oh man. Down to the corner in right field. Zimmerman on his way to third, and he's being waved home. Murphy's on his way to third, and Cesar's throw comes to the plate. It's going to be a triple, and it's 3 0 Nationals on top. They have scored eight runs in this series in the first inning. Well, I'll say it again. Uh, they're not missing the fastball, that's for sure. They get a little ahead in the count, 1 0. Uh, they get those fastball counts, and man, they're squaring that fastball up. It's supposed to be a fastball in, tailed right down the heart of the middle of the plate. And like you said, Mike, they are not missing the fastball. Yeah, most teams will pop one up every now and then. <laughs> Swing and miss one. But here, but again, here we come back to where the that Mike made the the great point earlier. 
they're feeling comfortable in the batter's box and we talked about it yesterday. We've seen one fastball against Taylor inside a little bit and by no means do we say hit people but you have to make it an uncomfortable at bat not knowing if they're going to be able to throw inside. It just opens up the outside and other pitches better. Well, there you go 11 fastballs two curbs so far for Noah. You know sometimes when a team is hot like this like these guys are the pitcher needs to be able to throw something off speed for strikes you need you know what I mean if you want to get ahead of them if you want to get them out there you go they were just what I'm talking about right there start them off with a breaking ball for a strike double up on the breaking ball you know even triple up sometimes but these guys have proven that they are all over the fastball. Worth had two hits in yesterday's game with three RBIs back to back breaking pitches it's 0 and 2. Now worse up uh, yeah, I guarantee you right now we're singing well you know this could be this pitch could be a little uh, troublesome for me right here and by that I mean that somebody's going to get one under the chin sooner or later. Is it going to be me now. I don't think hitters think that way anymore. Another curve ball he breaks his back. Well he might have been thinking that way on that swing. <laughs> <laughs> the way that swing looked, right? No, I, I agree with you, man. I, I don't think no. the butt wasn't. Thank you. Yeah. I, I don't think they do. Um, I know I did when I played. I mean, here you see it. His kind of little step in the bucket action right there. But there was, back to my point. Originally, uh, three he tripled up on the breaking yes. ball for three strikes in a row right there and broke the bat and got the hitter to pop up. Let's see if he can get through it now by getting Ramos. Ramos also had two hits in yesterday's game and a double overall, hitting 406. With a home run and five runs batted in. Fastball outside, it's 1 0. This stuff's been going on since the beginning of time in baseball. What do you do when the opposition is roping you all over the ballpark? And it's easy for us to sit here and say, well, you got to knock somebody down. You got to pitch him up under the chin. You got to. I guarantee you, if hitters are 100% comfortable, they will hit you. Off the curveball, a soft chopper to the right side. Hernandez throws him out. Well, he certainly adjusted and went to the breaking pitch these last two hitters. So Max Scherzer will have a three run lead to work with as we go to the bottom of the first here at Citizens Bank Park. Three nothing. Let's see if the Phils can get something going offensively against Max Scherzer. Their lineup brought to you by Xfinity. Xfinity X1 will change the way you experience TV. Leading it off at second base, Cesar Hernandez. Odubel Herrera bats second, then Mike Franco and Ryan Howard. Darren Ruff will hit fifth. Freddie Galvez sixth. And the bottom third of Cameron Ruff, Cedric Hunter, and Aaron Nola. No face right hitter Max Scherzer. Scherzer a 4.15 ERA so far. He's allowed a couple of home runs so far this season. Uh, but a 1-0 record coming off a season in which he won 14 games. Well, Matt, 
you know, he signed a big deal with the Nationals, and it didn't affect him. He got better, it seemed, as the year went on. Well, he got better as the, se uh, as the year went on. He also gets better as the game gets on. His last inning, he struggled. The first couple innings, you can see the scouting report, 92, 95 mile an hour fastball. This is right around 94. Four very good pitches, fastball, change, slider, and curve, and a pretty good ERA versus the Phillies with a 2.25. ERA. Yeah, he made four starts against the Phillies last year, and during that time he was three and zero. Oh. He delivers a fastball first strike to Cesar Hernandez. Cesar 0 for his last seven. Did not play in yesterday's game, so we get a miss 0 with two. You know when we do, when we do the all the keys of the game, there's so many keys that you can put out there, and one is is with Max on the mound, you have to slow him down. When he gets in a groove, he he throws it. He gets that little goofy movement, comes back to the, the top of the rubber. He's ready to go. That's a good point, man. Um, and I, I I don't think I don't think our young hitters would think in those terms. No. Um, you, you know, Franco does it a little bit, but I don't think he does it. You know, he'll swing and it will fall out of the batter's box, fall off balance, and maybe take him a while to get back in the box. But. Um, Back toward yeah. the middle, and Espinosa at shortstop throws him out, one away. And and to that point again, uh, Oduble coming up now will do that as well. He, he you know he hits it his own speed. Um, in fact, I don't think he knows it's you know maybe disrupting the pitcher's uh, momentum or feeling for the game, but it's the way he wants to hit, and he's going to hit that way whether you like it or not. Exactly. Now Odubel Herrera one for two with a couple walks in yesterday's game. <laughs> you know what? When I was a young hitter, um, I hit at Bob Gibson's speed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. However he wanted to do it, I got in that box and was, <laughs> Mr. Gibson, whenever you're ready, I'm here. I'll, you know, I'm, I'm going to hit at your speed. Odubel's the kind of guy, though, that he'll he'll take his time. Yes, absolutely. And you know, I think it's really cool that he's excited about this walking thing now. And he is excited about it. Yeah, I'm telling you, this, if this young man learned to get 80 to 90, maybe 100 walks in a year. Wow, would that would that you know it had totally changed his production. Well, last year he walked 28 times, and that was 60th. In the National well, League. Yeah, uh, Tommy, I'll tell you, if he got it to 60 walks, he, he'd probably hit 300 easily. 2 1 pitch to him. Outside corner. That's a pitcher's pitch right there. It's 2 at 2. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, the Indians defeated the Mets 7 5. Matt Harvey went 5 and 2 thirds and allowed six hits and five runs. The Indians were 6 for 9 with runners in scoring position. The Indians were 0 for 15. The first 15 guys did not get a hit. And then after that, it just exploded against Harvey. 0 oh, and 3. Yeah. Oh, well, well. We saw that. 3 and 2 to Oduble. Little dribbler foul. All right, so from a walking standpoint for Oduble, 28 walks last year. He's had three multi walk games already this year. His first one last year was August 27th. That was his first and only multi walk game. And you know he claps his hands when he gets that walks a little Pete Rose you know um, he doesn't sprint to night, first but <laughs> no but I mean he, he lengthens those at bats out How about that we walked already now, this now, guy doesn't walk too many hitters does he didn't I see a number the other day that he see he leads the league in pitches per at bat correct he pitches like four, pitches seen four the whole year or something like that per right. at bat that's what he's averaging he's number one in pitches seen in fact it's on our notes here it's interesting. 200 and some pitches he's seen already, and uh, the four-hole hitter for the Blue Jays is number two. Yeah. Batista? Or yeah, Batista, Batista. Batista. Yeah, Murph had that chart uh, the other day that he did, uh, and it's a good step in the right direction uh, for Odubel. We asked Pete today, would you put him in the leadoff spot? And he said, I don't know. He said, I kind of want him two, three, you know, in that area. Here's Franco. Franco 0 for 4 in yesterday's ball game. And that one is looped into left center field, a base hit. 
Herrera is around second. He'll hold up there. Taylor did a good job getting to that ball quickly. And the Phillies have two on with one out. I think Franco, that ball kind of stung his hands because he yeah. cracked his bat. No doubt about it. He, he was a Youngsters who came to the ballpark tonight on Turkey Hill Kids Opening Night. Look at that giveaway that they were given tonight. Phillies warm up. Tom, you're right. He was a little out in front of that, kind of hooked it a little bit, caught it off the end of the bat. Well, you're talking about uh, Odubel being in the two hole. I think it's a formidable two, three, four uh, lineup. Uh, Left, right, left, and with Ruff in the lineup tonight, right after Howard. Time is called. Lucky McDonald's Phillies home run jackpot contestant is Wizzy Monado of Collegeville. Phillies hit a home run in tonight's ball game, then Wizzy will win $100. Wizzy. Wizzy. W I Z Z Y. I think that's a nickname. Has to be. Mm. He just got in on Howard. Who skies it out to shallow right center? The infield fly rule has been called. So Howard is out. Everybody go back to their bags. All right, that's a step in the right direction. Now there are two outs. <laughs> Think he just missed this one, guys? Yeah, this is a pitch right down the heart of the plate. You can tell he missed it. Just get underneath yeah. Mr. Harris. Well, you know me, I always believe that. He has a definite home run swing. There's no doubt about that. And they you knew a lot of times that's where it's going to end up. I mean, talk about experience. You know, when, when you when you think in long ball, um, or you have a tendency to uppercut just a little, as Ted Williams did. <laughs> ball can go up the elevator shaft. Rub takes outside, and it feels so good, Matt. You're right on the meat of the bat. You know, you're right there. You're like a fraction of a you know an inch from. From driving it out of the ballpark. But you walk back and you're like, well, I'm 0 for 1. And I had a pitch to hit. You well, might not see another pitch to hit. That's right. As long as he walks back and says, I'm not let, letting that happen again. You exactly. know, I'm going to get down through the ball. <laughs> Rough asked for time, was still partly in the box. Front foot was out. So how about getting your start against a right hander you know Max Scherzer. Yeah. <laughs> Pete was asked about the uh, you know the platoon he said you know you had some chances in spring training where rough batted against right handers and Howard batted against lefties that one is spun out towards shallow right center and Murphy takes the few steps back and makes the catch and he said well that was just sheer luck he goes I started him one day started Howard the next day started him two days started Howard the next two days said so I wasn't thinking right or lefty at that point.
Tomorrow's a great day here at Citizens Bank Park. It's the Fanatic's birthday brought to you by Citizens Bank. And all fans 14 and under will receive the Fanatic Flare Hair Visor. Tickets can be purchased uh, anytime by going to phillies.com. Should be a great day weather-wise here at Citizens Bank Park. A lot of festivities, a lot of cake to be cut. And the Fanatic will have a lot of uh, friends who will be here. I'm sure the Fanatic's... Um, Family will be in attendance if they're not already here in preparation for tomorrow's game. Espinosa swing and a miss. Wow. It's 0 and 1. Just a bit outside. The movement. Oh yeah. Perfect weather. Current weather 64 degrees. <laughs> I heard wow and I wanted to see what what it was. Well just <laughs> by the reaction that, that sinker. Yeah. A bit high on that it's one ball and one strike. Espinosa two for five yesterday. Yep there's the sun going down it was a bright sunshiny day. He's finally getting his chance to play shortstop every day. Finally getting that chance. Yeah. Heck, there was a time two years ago I wasn't even sure if he was going to get a chance to play second base. And yeah, they decided to play with what, Dan Ugla that year? Dan Ugla. Then they had Escobar come in. Yep. He wound up playing third base, but then they had Rendon coming back from injury. That made Escobar expendable. Zimmerman played third and Rendon played second. Right. So he was kind of the odd man out. And Zimmerman went to left field. That wasn't pretty all the time. The people said when I played the outfield, Tom. <laughs> That's hurt people's feelings. <laughs> Bye, dude. He lays off that breaking ball. It's two and two. Philly fans, next time you want to grab Philly seats, get the StubHub app. Not only will you find seats you love whenever you want, you can find the best seat for your buck when you sort by best value. We take the price and location of seats and show you which tickets at StubHub give you the best deal. So get the StubHub app today. Once you get MLB.com as well and come back and watch that breaking ball from Aaron Nola. Produces his first strikeout. This is an outstanding curveball. Yes, it is. Nice bite, tight spin. Late, tight break spin, that's for sure. Straight down. And him now having confidence in that pitch. He's got a couple outs on the last two or three hitters on that pitch. It's going to change the whole dynamic of the game. Scherzer's 0 for 5 this year. All five at bats he has uh, struck out. And he's behind 0 and 1. Back to shortstop, Freddie Galvis is behind the bag. And there are two outs. Well, this is our first weekend with Schmidt, although we spent a few weekends with Mike in spring training. This is officially right. our first one presented by Acme Markets. Um, you mentioned in the open how there's a buzz about this team. Could you sense it in spring training when you were with them? Yeah, yeah. Well, you talk about talent, man. They did such a wonderful job in their trade. You know, we hated to lose Cole. You know, we hated to lose Giles. You saw the benefits of, of losing those guys, and I saw them in spring training. I mean, we got a fantastic young crop of people in AAA and AA, and, uh, you know, for me, it's exciting because they all want to learn. They all want to talk. Um, they all have a smile on their face. And they're fun to be around. They, they really were, and, uh, you know, obviously, uh, we'd, li we'd like to be better than five and six, sure. but uh, I think everyone's optimistic. You agree, Matt? Oh, I would agree. And, and there's a great point about the they, they want to talk, they want to learn about hitting. You get an older team and they yeah, they think they figured it out a little bit. Now all of a sudden the younger guys start picking your brain a little bit. You know, I had the chance for eight days to be in uniform, and it was tremendous to talk guys about about hitting. One ball and two strikes. Boy, he is and he, he's really overwhelming with the breaking pitch right now. But that's his adjustment. To them hitting that fastball. At least it seems that or way. Well, you go to pitching backwards, you know, the old lefty, uh, left handers theory, pitch backwards. Yeah. And a straight See three calls. Throw those curveballs and then you sneak a fastball on the outer edge. 
Two strikeouts for Nola in the inning. He retires the Nationals in order. We'll head to the bottom of the second. It's the Nats three and the Phillies nothing. We'll get you set for Flyers and Caps Game 3. New Eagle Brandon Brooks will join us to talk about his impressions of Philly so far. Temple head coach Matt Rule will also be here. See you on Monday at 6 on the Comcast Network. Hope those guys have a chance to talk about a Flyers victory tonight against the Caps. It's scoreless right now. That is the line at Chickies and Pete's out in Ashburn Alley. It's important to get those fries. Get them while they're hot. These crab fries. That's, a That's the line, line out there now? Yeah. It's like the airport security line. Or, or, is, or is, that Mur is that Murph signing autographs? Murph, you out in Ashburn Alley signing autographs? Murph pitches inside to Freddie Galvis. See, he is. He doesn't have the mic. He's too busy signing. He can't hear us. Go ahead. He's thinking of something to say. <laughs> oh, that's the beauty of a butt. Maybe a little too hard. Murphy's got it. Flips in time. Just a little too hard. Yeah, a little too hard. That was like hugging the ground. You know, it wouldn't bounce anything. You know, barehand that ball and that ball's hugging the ground. It's a lot easier than when it has a little bounce to it. I think it's a good idea. It's a good try, though. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's got to deaden it a little bit more. So Scherzer has the first down here in the second. Tamara and Rupp. Yeah, we got to find a little bit more production out of the bottom of the batting order. And I think, I, I think, who doesn't know it? You know, they know it, we know it. Uh, you just look at the stats. He was saying today that Cameron is trying to adjust his swing. To get it back like it was in spring training, the path of his swing, more than anything else, he said he is making progress on it. You guys know better than anybody. Sometimes when you fall into a habit, it's easier to pick them up than it is to break them. Well, it's harder to break when you don't get on a regular plane, like out there four or five games. Yeah. Strike out of Rupp. That's the first K of the night for Scherzer. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, the Reds have defeated the Cardinals 9 8. Zach Cozart, Brandon Phillips, Jay Bruce, all with two RBIs for Cincinnati. And the Reds are over 500. Brandon Finnegan, who we saw in Cincinnati, gets the win. Cedric Hunter, he also tries to show butt, takes inside. It's 1 0. Cedric three hits and 29 ABs so far. You know, and we were just talking about Cameron about getting his swing back in. He's getting started when he's hitting. You can see right here, he still has a lot of movement. This is the last pitch. He's getting beat. His hands aren't getting back. All of a sudden, he's got to go from A to B as quick as he can. 
you have to. That's what we're talking about, slowing it down. You know, slowing your movement down, slowing your body down a little bit. Starting earlier, it's, it's better to be early than it is late. You'll never be able to get a knock if you start too late. At least if you start a little early, your hands will stay back and you can still get the barrel through the zone. Over the mound, charging is Espinosa. And he throws out Cedric Hunter. So an easy inning, as it turns out. That'll be 6 3 on the put out. Easy inning for Scherzer. 1 2 3 go the Phils. Two of the Bucks. 3 0 Washington. Up the fans trivia question. Log on to Phillies.com. Go to the fans section for all the information and please submit your answer on the subject line. All right, guys, the question is what team did Dusty Baker finish his playing career with? What team did Dusty Baker finish his playing career? Answer will be revealed a little later on. Dusty uh, was an excellent player. In fact, uh, you think about managers who were very good players. Most times, the managers were so so players in the big leagues. You know, Joe Torre was an excellent player. Dusty, of course. Uh, Mattingly. Don Mattingly. That's a good point. Dave Roberts wasn't bad. He was a you know, more of a base stealer. In fact, the people in Boston think he was excellent. I think he's the greatest ever. I think he's the greatest of all time. There's Rendon to lead it off in the third. Fastball in there. It's 0 and 1. Well, it, it must not be the Braves or the Dodgers. Uh, I will tell you that it's not the Braves or the Dodgers. So we get a miss. It's over two. His old teammate is in the first base coach's box, Davy Lopes, with the Dodgers, but he also played for the team that Dusty finished his career with. There's Davy. It was a pretty healthy cut at a breaking ball, wasn't it? But he missed it by quite a bit. It was a big hack. That's why I'm saying, you know, you've got to throw that ball up and into these guys so that every time the ball starts at their front shoulder, they don't, you know, they're not assuming it's going to break over the plate. Swing and a miss. It still works when it's tight and good like that. Six in a row retired by Noah. Ever since we started this breaking ball barrage, we've got three K's and a broken bat. But that, but that that got them off the fastball. Is that correct? At least that's for now. My, that, you know, that's what I would think. So now he can go go back to the fastball. We showed you those numbers before. I mean, look where his fastball curve splits are: 53% fastball, 47 curveball. Before it was predominant fastballs to the first five hitters of the of the game. Harper pops it up foul. That was a changeup. That's his first, first changeup. You notice something about Harper. You know, we, we were talking about uh, Cameron Rupp and the plane of his swing. Harper makes a concerted effort. Throw, throw Ryan Howard in there too. A concerted effort to get the bat hit going down through the ball. 
may get a shot of that from the side camera here eventually. That one is looped out toward left center. It's going to drop for a hit. And those kind of hits only come when you're trying, you know, when you're fighting it off with a downward plane. It's almost like a little V swing right there. See how that that bat goes this way, and that's what you want to do. It's throwing the barrel down through. He's really trying to generate that backspin by getting down on the ball and then going through it. And then, your, and, the, and then your little broken bat bleeders like that aren't looping up high in the air enough to catch. Right. That you know they get on the ground pretty quick. Zimmerman had an RBI single his first time up. Oh, he got it. Nope, he's back. That was really close. Ryan Howard's looking into the dugout. He's taking his time before he flips it back to Aaron Noah. Larry Bow is going to get confirmation as to whether they're going to review this. Take a look. He's out. Yeah, I think he is. He's out. I believe he is. Yeah, they pushed his arm. He's out. <laughs> Larry Boa just said, challenge it. <laughs> Where's Joe West? Here he comes. <laughs> nice move. Really good move. Come on, Bryce. Admit it. Just <laughs> run in the dugout. <laughs> You that, know you were out. That would make it so much easier, You're wouldn't right. it? It wouldn't take as if much time. If it were time. golf, he could do. He'd have to do that, wouldn't he? He'd have to have the honor system. Game. That's it. Watch it again. Look how slow. And watch the arm move right there. And he's not. Oh yes, this will be easy. Well, <laughs> be careful, Mike. Joe West to your right. Andy Fletcher to the left. Tell the fans out here to spread the word. He's out. <laughs> and there's what he call it. Uh, plenty of evidence. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I think the the shot we showed was was right on. Joe is talking to the uh, representative of uh, from MLB. He does not have a windscreen on his microphone. He's wondering where it is. Right. Andy Fletcher has one. He doesn't. Just watch his hand when he tags him. He's tagging here. His hand ends up on the side of the bag. Right there, he moves his hand yeah, you can over see, to the corner. Yep, of the you can bag. see the bend. He's out. And he is out, according to Joe West. And they're two away here in the third. Excellent move. Good challenge by Pete. Yeah, we give it. Credit to Brian Howard for that one. Nice little delay there with the throwback to the pitcher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 75 on that curve. Took even a little bit more off. That's See? that's the that's the thing about Nola's arm is that he can absolutely throw you a nasty one, and then all of a sudden he throws you a backup one as they hit it. You give up on it. That was a backup curve. That's, that's a nasty one. Yep. Difference of three miles per hour. Four strikeouts for Nola the last two innings. It wasn't a one-two-three inning, but it was pretty darn close. He's got that breaking pitch working. He's got the ball balanced, which is good. Now the Phillies need to get some balance to their offense when we return.
Phillies baseball is brought to you by McDonald's. Come into McDonald's for an egg McMuffin and medium iced coffee for three forty nine. Buy Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers at our most exciting lineup ever. Shop ChooseNissan.com. And by T-Mobile. Get your major league coverage. T-Mobile has doubled its 4G LTE since 2015. Well, tonight is also the Philadelphia Science Festival. And some of the youngsters get a chance to see uh, some of the different things going on around the ballpark. I think if that young lady had a staring contest with somebody, she would win. Whoa. Where's Murph? This is serious. Nola's down looking on strikes. That was uh, that was some hawk that was sitting there, huh? Is that a hawk? I thought it was a hawk. I don't know my birds. It's either a hawk or an eagle, but I believe it was a hawk. You know, Murph, hawk will never die. You're absolutely right about that. It was a hawk. It's a red tail hawk. Yeah, they're advertising St. Joe's right now on the big screen, so. Oh, perfect. All ties in. Cesar Hernandez takes a strike. It's 0 1. That pitch might have been a little up. I hated that pitch for the left hander. <laughs> the back door breaking ball. A fastball. Whoa. Just a little behind the hitter. I guess so. Yeah, you know, I'm really shocked there's no warnings right now. <laughs> I mean, I mean seriously though. The second time he's done it. Well, and it's, by no means did he do it on purpose. He just choked off the fastball. But the way baseball is going nowadays, you think that would be a warning because you want to protect the hitters. He did it to Oduble and Oduble's at bat. Two balls, two strikes to Hernandez. Swing and a miss. He threw him a change up. And that's the third strikeout for Max Scherzer. Schmidt, you made a good point off the air when we were talking. This is just a. This is what you call a sick changeup. You think you're gonna hit it? Drops out of the zone. Oh, yeah. that, that first inning, though, he gave some hitters some pretty good pitches to hit. Sure. sure. And, yeah. And, yes. we, and we didn't capitalize on it, and that's the problem. Is all of a sudden all these numbers here, you start getting locked in. The more he gets going, he gets he finds that rhythm. Well, you see the number of pitches that he throws. It's not, you know, three pitches and done. It's five. He's got five different pitches that he throws up there in one way, shape, or form. Odubel takes a strike. It's one and one. Back toward the box. That was the changeup again. And the putout goes 1 3, and the Phillies go down quietly in their half of the third. Three in the books, three runs of the first for the Nationals is what we have so far as we go to the third.
this RAV fourth inning is brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. Let's go Phillies. Well, that is one smart looking hat that youngster's wearing there. I think that's the kid's hat or is that dad? That's uh, yeah, that's dad. Yeah, I think that's his hat. Dad's hat. I think that's his hat. Is that the glass? He oh, stole Iggy. that kid's hat. He's going to try to eat it. There it goes. It gone. <laughs> and then he's like, "Where? Dive I, in there. I gotta Let go him eat it. you. I got to go get it. Oh, there it is. <laughs> well, we go to the top of the fourth inning, and Daniel Murphy, who tripled homer run his first time up, will be the batter. He has three hits in the series. And he lines one out toward right field. Cedric Hunter will make the catch. Oh, he's hitting everything. I mean, they are hitting everything hard. Uh, they were in the first inning, but man, he has hit everything hard in the series so far. Well, after the National Series winds down tomorrow, the Mets are in town for three games, including Monday night. It's a Hatfield Dollar Dog Night. All three games are at 7:05. Tickets can be purchased by going to Phillies.com. So they're still a little unfriendly around here with Jason Worth. I think it gets louder as uh, his time away from the Phillies gets broader. You know that Daniel Murphy, he just plays pepper with the pitcher. That's what it looks like to me. A little short swing, just and he can hit home run. Don't you know? We saw that in the postseason last year. But I mean, he's just just a solid little. He reminds me of uh, uh, the third baseman for the Cardinals. Matt Very Carpenter. similar, Matt Carpenter. Yeah. Well, what pitch to Worth? Well, he signed that three-year deal. I think a lot of people were surprised that the Mets did not resign him. They just felt like it was too much money and they wanted to use their money elsewhere, including Cespedes. And I think it was kind of a love hate relationship, Murph, uh, for Daniel Murphy last year. They loved him, particularly in the postseason. They didn't like the errors from time to time, including the postseason, <laughs> but his numbers offensively were very good. Yeah, it, it, you know, you think back to the postseason, it really was a postseason for the ages for him. You know, early on, it, you know, in the first two rounds of the postseason, but he ended up batting that 328, seven home runs, 11 RBIs. But I think you're right, you know, when they came down to it, the money he was asking for, he ended up getting, you know, three years, 37 and a half million from the Nationals. It was just too much for the Mets. But you look at his numbers so far for Washington, he's already paying dividends for them. It's obviously not going to keep this pace up all season coming into tonight batting 464 but he has been very good for them. I'm sure the, the Nats are pretty happy to have him over there at second base. Yeah, I would agree. Phillies are happy with Noah right now because he has five strikeouts. And even though Daniel Murphy hit the ball hard he was able to get Jason Worth on this breaking pitch. Location strike bottom of the strike zone. Outstanding. It, it, you know he couldn't. He couldn't even swing. <laughs> that pitch was so tight and so sharp. Ramos grounded out softly. He was the first guy that. You're right. The first knows. guy that got to breaking ball yep. fever. <laughs> yep. Broken bat ground ball. Yep. And the temperature has been rising on that breaking ball since in the first inning. What a pitch. That one's lined into left field. So he decides to throw the fastball to him. Ruff will cut it off. Ramos is thinking too. The throw to second base won't get there in time. Third double of the year. The first ball squared up in a while, except for Daniel Murphy's little home back liner, the first out hitter of this inning. Yeah, fastball didn't get in far enough. Actually, it was a pretty good pitch to drive out of the ballpark. So, so 21 curveballs, 26 fastballs, just the two changeups. Pretty good chance that the curveball catches the fastball soon. What do you think, Murph? I don't even like messing around with this hitter. Walk Sh him intentionally. Well, sure, there's a five K's and six at bats and a chopper to short. Yeah. You're down three nothing already. Is this the old uh, pitching very carefully? 
I'd be screaming from the dugout get a swing in Danny. <laughs> right. What the heck? you don't have to have a strike to get a base hit. Outside two and oh. Well, you may see the four. I heard the whistle. Yep. He just whistled so that means four fingers. So Espinosa will be intentionally walked and they'll go after uh, Max Scherzer. Explain to me. And there, there may be a real reason just because you know, I don't know it uh, but what is the purpose of the first two pitches hoping that he may make an easy out on one hoping he gets anxious goes out of the strike zone. You know, and, and does you a favor. MLB.tv Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, delivers everything you have come to expect and much more. Watch every out of market game live in HD on over 400 devices, including includes a free subscription to At Bat Premium, the number one app for live baseball. Blackout and other restrictions do apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. All right, so Scherzer is grounded out to shortstop tonight. He's 0 for 6 on the year. Curveball. It got surprised him a little bit. Yeah, it buckled him. You can tell by that right leg and the front leg. I mean, uh oh, out to right field. Hunter gone back. It's over his head and it's going to one hop the wall. One run is in. They're waving Espinosa. And Espinosa is going to score. Hernandez's throw is late. And it's now five nothing Nationals. That hurts. It does hurt. Fastball down the middle. Right. And that's probably the old. Well, I can't throw three curveballs to the pitcher. They'll get all over me if I do that. There's a nice little downward plane on that swing. That ball didn't jump off the fence there. Right? Look at the see. Cedric didn't seem to get that ball to the relay man as fast as he might have. Well, it's the first double for Scherzer since 2013. And it's 0-1 now to Taylor. Nola started the inning by getting Murphy and Worth. And then since that time, three straight batters reach, including the two run double by Scherzer. And the 0 1 pitch outside. One ball, one strike. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, the Cubs defeated the Rockies 6 2. Jake Arietta is now 3 0. Eight innings, one walk, eight strikeouts. And it was the last time he gave up a run at Wrigley Field. Uh, he has just been. Cole Hamels. No hitter. That, I was, I was going to say it was that. Was it really that long ago? Yep. No one better hurry, and he does in time to get Taylor. Side is retired. However, the Nationals scored two more runs of the two-run double by that guy, Max Scherzer. We'll head to the bottom of the fourth, five-zip, Washington.
can't live without like 3M super sticky post-it notes available in a world of colors and ideal for the most hard to stick surfaces. Personally delivered to your desktop for free by who? But WB Mason. Max Scherzer has a five run lead to work with. Max Scherzer signed a free agent contract uh, with the Nationals prior to last year. Seven years and over two hundred million dollars uh, that'll take him through two thousand twenty one. But there's deferred money that will pay him some part of his salary until he's forty three years old through two thousand twenty eight. You know, he's the wins leader since 2012 in Major League Baseball. How about the fact he's got one more win than Clayton Kershaw and four more than Madison Bumgarner during that time? People wondered, you know, why the Tigers just didn't re-sign him. I wonder. I like, wonder too. I mean, seriously, he's yeah. a workhorse. You know what you're going to get out of every time he takes the mound. He's going to throw strikes. He's going to be around the strike zone. He's a gamer on the mound. I mean, he's just—he's a workhorse. Michael Franco takes high. So, his deferred money, the last three years of his contract, goes toward uh, his 43rd birthday. He'll be 37 when he's a free agent again, potentially. And I don't see that that often, where a guy's going to defer for that long after. Is it Bobby Benilla still getting a million dollars a year? Bobby Benilla still getting paid by the Mets. One ball, one strike to Franco. And their second baseman, Daniel Murphy, only got 37. Chump change. <laughs> Pitching a defense, Mike. Pitching defense. There's the one-two pitch to Franco. Tried to hold off. Did he? Yes, he did, says Andy Fletcher. And it's two and two. <laughs> Try to run a fastball up there. That's a good take. Rendon in foul territory, and it comes back to him and makes the catch. Coming up later tonight, there's no tougher place in MLS to get three points than in Seattle. The Union against the Sounders, immediately following our Phillies coverage right here on TCN. Sounders play uh, in the same place that the Seahawks play, and it's loud. It's loud for football, but they get good crowds for, for soccer, too. Ryan Howard. Howard popped up his first time up. Mike, did you ever look on the uh, home run list when you were playing? Like where you were? Like where you tied? Who you tied? Who you passed? Those type of things? Uh, not really. Not until you get, uh, you know, into the 470, 480 range. Uh, then people start telling you, and you know, that one did this or that one did that, and, you know, and they start to get some. Uh, Hall of Fame names. Did you like when people told you? Because <laughs> I, I well, told Ryan that he did. Did I like it? I must have hit a home run if, <laughs> if they're telling me. So I like that's that. Exactly, that's a good way of looking at it. Because <laughs> yeah. I, I told Ryan when he tied Yogi Berra, I didn't say anything to, to him today about tying Joe DiMaggio. I figured I'd let that one go. One ball and two strikes. List was a little smaller, though, when you were doing it. Like the guys yeah. who were passing. Imagine Barry Bonds and Willie Mays and um, Alex Rodriguez and the rarefied air that those guys were in. <laughs> going to come a point where you're going to have to stop telling them who they're passing. Here's Howard last night. Well, he told Sarge he's going to hit a home run. He sure did. The well, Sarge said, "Hey, hit a home run. It's uh, Jackie Robinson night. Hit it for Jackie." And he responded by. Okay, I will. <laughs> Swing and a miss. So that is strikeout number four for Scherzer. See, that's another pitch I never had to deal with. Uh, 
occasionally there was a pitcher that could be hit a little rising cutter up there, like Dennis Dennis actually. But that one right there, do you think that's a slider or a cutter? Do you I mean do you think that ball had had slider spin on it? Do yes. you think it just sailed in? I had I think it had slider spin on it. Mm -hmm. Didn't have a lot of depth though, was it? Whoops. It's called a lane changer. Sure was. Darren Ruff <laughs> takes a fastball. That's a good way to describe you it. The cutter is a lane changer, and the changeup <laughs> is the bat misser. <laughs> That's a good one. Darren fouls that one into the sweet level, and it's 0-2. Boy, he's dialed in right now. Yep. Scherzer is. That's five strikeouts. He's retired. The fills in order in each of the last three innings. In fact, he's retired 11 straight. We'll head to the fifth. Five nothing, Washington. Five nothing Nationals on top of the Phils as we go to the top of the fifth inning. Chickies and pizza, crab fries are outstanding. But I mean, Murph, seriously? Well, you know, I, I got to see what they're doing here. The what, line is what the line is, is why is epic. the line so long? I don't know. That's what did, I'm trying to find out. But do they know that you're Greg <laughs> with three G's, Murphy? You should be just go up front, Murph. I want to know if he cut if he cut in line. <laughs> I did not cut in line. I'm just waiting my turn, and yeah. then we'll find out what's happening. Up Murph, there. ask the guy in front of you how many home games he sees. How many home games he sees? The guy right in front of you with this. <laughs> <laughs> No, you're not going to ask? No, I'm not. <laughs> Rendon takes low, and it's 2 0. Oh. Rendon is 1 for 2. There has to be a reason besides the fact that they're delicious. I'll tell you, they're moving fast, though. The line's moving quickly. 2 and 1 to Rendon. <laughs> You got money, Murph? You need us to run you down some cash? Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> that might not be a bad idea. Outside, it's three and one. This guy's like a right handed Daniel Murphy, isn't he? Think about that now. Short, quick, somewhat close to the plate. Got a good swing. Yes, he does. He's, he's been a really good hitter ever since he's been in the big leagues. That was, I think his injury last year was one that really hurt them oh, for being out as long as he was. Absolutely. Talk about the balance in their lineup. You know that that 
that diminished the balance in their lineup. Wow, three and two breaking ball. Well, he walks to lead off the fifth inning. Just the second walk this year for Noah. Second one tonight. Or should be third. It was the intentional walk. And now Bryce Harper will be the hitter. Well, I tell you, when you think about leading off the inning, your two hole hitter, and you get to where you feel like you need to throw him a three and two roundhouse slur. Think that's a, uh, the catcher calling the pitches or the pitcher? Catcher, I believe. I'm going to defer to you guys on that one. Well, it'll be simple to look at the signs and answer my question, but I was just I was just curious. It's, it's you know it just seems a strange pitch. I mean. You, you, I can see it to this hitter, you know, with a couple men on. Well, he missed again there, so Rupp goes out to chat with him. That three ball count was only the second one he's had tonight. But they're aggressive, and they're even aggressive with the breaking pitch. How come they weren't covering their mouths with their gloves? Maybe they're talking. <laughs> maybe they're talking in, uh, in different signals. Okay, watch. Somebody had to read their lips. <laughs> yeah. 65 pitches so far for Nola. That one has hit well, and if it stays fair, it's not coming back. It's a fair ball home run, a two-run shot for Bryce Harper, his second home run. Of the series, and it's now seven nothing, Washington. Well, he's five for five now. You heard the report earlier with Murph talking about his last four four games here. He's homework every game. Well, this is number five, right down in his wheelhouse, and again. Into a guy that has a kind of an awkward swing. See how he has the the swing and he steps in the bucket afterwards. He he's proven that he can hit a ball to right field. What happened? Did he hit the ball to left field? Broke his bat, jam shot to left field. And you still contend, just like you said in the open, or to your as far as the keys go, to make him hit it to left field. I, I want to see it. I want to see a good two seamer low and away. If he hits a ball 395 feet to left center for a home run, I will tip my hat every time. But now all of a sudden, if you're getting into a, a, his his strong area where he is a pull hitter and he has proven it so far this series in two games. Of the third base line, Franco comes charging, bare hands, throws low, dug out by Howard in time. Well, they might replay that one. That was a heck of a play. I don't mean like he beat it, I mean like Ryan might have come off early, trying to cheat. I got you. I won't step in. Dusty Baker is uh, taking a, a peek at the replay. There is Franco. Franco is really good at the bare hand charge play. Really good. Maybe one of the best I've ever seen. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. He's been excellent this year on this. That's a great pick by oh, Ryan. We got him. Think his foot was off the bag, Mike? Uh, it's real close. It's an art sometimes for first baseman. Yes, no question. They've decided not to review it. Boy, that looked like a really good play. So now Murphy's up. He's one for two. He lined out his last time, tripled the time before. Take another look. See where his foot is. His foot's on the bag. Looks like it might be still on the bag. He's out. It is an art, though, for first base. Some were better than others. Mattingly was good. Keith Hernandez was excellent at it. And most of the time, almost, I would say, almost always, it looks like he leaves early, but he has the bag. You know, you, you have the bag. It's just a, the ability to cheat. 
And I, I say the word cheat because you make it look like you're cheating when right. in reality you try and bait the umpire into calling the guy out. Trying to make it look like the throw beating. It's amazing. You kind of got the perfect storm going here right now with these guys, you know, with, with our pitchers against this Nationals team. We get behind in the count, they smoke the fastball. Change up low, and it's three and two. They're patient, they're willing to take the walk, and they just hit the ball words pitch they're really hot right now broke his bat and it's caught by Hernandez two away here in the fifth Jason Worth is coming up Reminder the Phillies Baseball Academy is open for business. You can call 610 520 3400 or go to the community section at phillies.com. The Baseball Academy is for baseball and softball players, girls and boys, ages 6 to 14. There's four divisions that allow for age appropriate instruction. They're going on throughout the course of the summer. Jason Worth is 0 for 2 tonight. Takes a fastball just a bit outside, 1 0. Now you know Jason Worth. To me, he's sort of like an old time hitter. You know, this guy is looking for a pitch most of the time. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he, he, he'll he'll step in the bucket like he couldn't have hit either one of those pitches. Right no there. chance. <laughs> no chance. Yeah. And they were very close to being strikes, but why is he worried about the you know why is he buckling on the breaking ball like that? Because it was a two and zero breaking ball. Don't get me wrong, which is a strange time to throw it, but might get it again. Hope he gets a fastball. It's two and two. We were kids on the playground. We used to say, "What do you want, egg in your beer?" <laughs> you ever hear that one? Watch his front foot out of lands. <laughs> look at that! Look at it. All of a sudden, his whole front oh, he's side on his heels. is leaving. Which means you work that outside corner, stay out there. And they do, and he's down on strikes for the second time this evening. However, the damage is done by his buddy Bryce Harper. Two run home run, a bullet. We'll go to the bottom of the fifth, seven nothing, Washington. Time for our Citizens Bank Minor League Report. The uh, Valley lost to Pawtucket 6-5. Cam Perkins, though, three hits, three runs scored. Clearwater defeated Jupiter 11-zip. Zach Green had a home run and three runs scored. Blue Claws lost to Greensboro 3-2. Zach Coppola was three for five with a run scored. Citizens Bank, the next time you have a question about money, don't keep it to yourself. Ask a citizen. 
Freddy Galvis leads it off. And he fires one foul. Out of play, and it's 0 1. Beautiful night here at Citizens Bank Park. Nice crowd. Turkey Hill kids opening night. 0 and 2. The giveaway uh, that the Phils gave out that that youngster's wearing right there, the youngster with the popcorn. Could be one of the giveaways of the year already. That's un it's unbelievable. I mean, it really is. You're you're a true big leaguer, and that's what the big leaguers wear in spring training, warm-ups. Yeah, the thought was uh, each and every year is to give out uh, something for the kids to utilize all year long during the baseball season. As Jason Worth or softball season makes that catch in fair territory, and there's one away. So uh, Scott Brandreth. Who oversees all the promotional items that are given out? He and his staff were talking about, you know, long sleeve shirt, a sweatshirt, uh, or even a T-shirt for tonight, a regular T-shirt for tonight. Eric Pesci, who uh, is one of Scott's, uh, one of the guys that works with Scott, he saw that the Dodgers did this, the Royals did this before. Thought, let's give it a try. I mean, it's a sharp yep. giveaway, and it, it, it'll clean up well too. <laughs> it, 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 there's no worry about that. Funnel cake, um, pretzel, whatever. It'll clean up fine. But there's no need to clean it up because it's a big league <laughs> coat, jacket, warm up, whatever you want to call it. He's got sugar all over it. <laughs> it's a man after my own heart. As Rupp takes low, it's 2 0. Oh. Well, we might get a look at a. Fastball swing right here, Manny. Two old pitch. There you go. Late again. There has to be a downward plane. There has to be a swing at that fastball. 93 4 5 up in the zone. It has to have a little bit of top hand and some downward plane in order to hit it. That's a heck of a take right there. Coming off of two fastball misses. You know, it's like a little bit of a tomahawk. We've talked about it before, but you have to get the bat head above this rising fastball. Flips that one back uh, over the screen. But you see right there, there that, that was a pretty good swing. But you see how the ball, you know, I don't need to tell you, the ball, the ball tries like heck to get to the top of the bat, doesn't it? In the air to left field, man, did he crush that one into the second deck? Nope, just below it. Wow! So a home run for Cameron Rupp. Phillies are on the board. It's now a 7 1 ball game. Well, I'm glad to see Cameron get on with one of those fastballs. I, I guess maybe he shortened up a little bit and he, he made the necessary adjustments. They all count. And that was probably a higher fastball than the two he swung and missing. Well, he just needs to remember the feeling, the feeling that he had offering at this pitch, what the difference was in that and the swing and misses. Makes a winner out of Wizzy Minato of Collegeville. Cedric Hunter hits one foul down the right field line. Wizzy just won 100 bucks thanks to Cameron Rupp to the McDonald's home run jackpot. That's just a short, compact swing. He backed off a little bit on a swing, realizing that the two pitches that was blown by him previously was over swinging. Watch how easy this swing is. Watch how high it is. He got on top of that ball yeah, he did. very nicely. Runner hooks it foul and he stays. He moves the count to one and two. Off the camera, Ruff his first home run of the year. 
You know, you, you and I were, were hitters, we're, and, and people out there watching, you know, with the naked eye, you really can't see what we're talking about. But we, we can talk about it because we felt it. You know, we've. We've done that. We, we've swung and missed and swung and missed. Go, why the heck am I not hitting this ball? Why the heck? And then all of a sudden, maybe the next one, for some reason, you know, you you feel more compact. You feel more tight and more connected to your body. And boom, there there the ball goes. Very true. Sometimes you can take a where you think it's an unbelievable swing, you foul it off, and then all of a sudden you'll take a swing and hit a ball. And yet you were just trying to guard the plate. Or go, how, how'd that ball go that far? Ooh, right into the shift. Espinosa's up with it. 6 3 on the put out, two away. Hunter is retired. And Emmanuel Burris will be introduced as the pinch hitter for the Phils. Dyer Inahosa is throwing in the pen. So Aaron Nola's night is done after five innings. Charged with seven hits and seven runs. Pete said today, he said, you know, there are going to be days like last night where the opposition is able to hit everything that you, you offer. I don't think he anticipated it would happen again this close. No, I don't think it happened. Thought it would happen in 14 straight innings. They're not straight innings, but in 14 right. innings. Burris hits it out towards center field. Taylor with his back to the infield sprints and it's off his glove and off the 401 sign. Burris runs well and he'll run on his way to third. The throw by Taylor is way offline, but man, did it have some distance on it. <laughs> and they'll score that a triple. Yeah, well hit ball. Glad to see. Uh, Mr. Hunter smoke a ball. He got to the spot too. He got to the yeah. spot, but you know what? Burroughs will take it, that's for sure. Yes. He'll take that knock. His last triple was back in 2008. Oh, what a year that was. <laughs> that's the first hit of the year for Emmanuel Burris. He was 0 for 9 coming in. Now Cesar Hernandez, who's 0 for 2, a ground out and a strikeout. Well, it'd be nice to get this run home here with two outs, one run in. That Burris is double or triple last one came in 08. He was a member of the San Francisco Giants. And that was the year he actually played over 100 games with San Francisco. 2 0 to Cesar. So what? You didn't like the call. You're still in a hitter's count, two to one, two and one. You know, it was a pretty good pitch to hit. Change up, wasn't it? Looked like a change up. That was definitely a change up there. And now three and one. Among National League hitters. The third longest drought, active drought for home runs is Cesar's. The longest one is the guy on third, Emmanuel Burris. This is a 3 1 count to Cesar Hernandez. Broke his bat and popped it up. Rendon, the third baseman, makes the call and puts it away. Side is retired. The Phillies do get a run on the home run by Cameron Ruff. The high fastball. And he took it deep out of the yard into left field. We'll head to the sixth at 7 1 Washington.
introducing himself to Philadelphia in striking style. Thursday afternoon versus the Padres was a 113 pitch performance of domination by Vince Velasquez. His first complete game shutout consisted of 80% first pitch strikes while retiring 22 of the final 23 batters he faced. His fastball was humming all game as he fanned 16 batters, the most by a Philly since Cliff Lee in 2011. The 23 year old has a 15 inning scoreless streak in his first two starts. And his stinginess is brought to you by Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless. Well, it's kids opening night brought to you by Turkey Hill. So the fanatic uh, brought a a smaller fanatic out with an ATV. He gone. <laughs> uh, Where do you get one of those? I don't know. That'd be pretty cool to get one. That's awesome. Uh oh. There's no opening there. Oh, you can't do that with the Fanatics ATV. Just pick it up. Well, I, I thought I thought he nice did a heck of a job. Yeah, nice work there. You know it would have been awesome if he would have drove out in center field. <laughs> it just kept just kept going, going, driving yeah. around, <laughs> make people chase him. Well, tonight is kids opening night, and tomorrow the kids they'll be happy again because it's the Fanatics' birthday here at Citizens Bank Park. Things aren't uh, as happy now because the Phillies are down 7 1. The Nationals have just come out with a barrage of offense in these first two games. Dalier Inahosa will take over on the mound for Aaron Noel, who went five innings, allowed seven earned runs and seven hits. Wilson Ramos, one for two. He's grounded out. He's also doubled and scored. Just a bit outside, one and one. Mike, not that it has anything to do with the, tonight's game, but I, I know you, you watched a little of the Velasquez outing the other day. What'd you think? Very impressive. Very impressive. Uh, I'm, I'm anxious to see how he how he follows it up in his next start. Just if there's any carryover, uh, you know, any fatigue. Uh, now the. The words out, so to speak, around the league. Watch out for this guy, Velasquez, <laughs> the Phillies. Um, very impressive. Yeah, his next start will be Tuesday here at Citizens Bank Park against the Mets. And not only is he coming off the 16 strikeout performance, but he has faced the Mets already. He faced them last weekend. So there's even that that they haven't understand. They already have a a personal scouting report on him. He's a, he's a great field though here at the ballpark. And and the pitcher has a distinct advantage when the hitter has not seen him before. Back toward the middle and Freddie Galvis right around the second base bar. What a way. Kids opening night and it's time for a timeless moment. Murph take it away. Timeless moment yes brought to you by Coors Banquet and as you mentioned it is kids opening night so I've enlisted the help of my buddy Luke here 10 years old from Montgomeryville and he's going to help us out so the Coors Banquet timeless moment take it away Luke. On this date April 16 1959 Dave Philly gets his major league record ninth straight pinch hit. Mm. Wow look at that flawlessly delivered by Luke way to go and, and your sister over there Miranda as well. Thanks for being out at the ballpark on kids opening night when you sign autographs on Monday at school Luke make sure you write very neatly OK good penmanship. <laughs> Thank you <laughs> guys back upstairs. All right Murph that was that outstanding. Smile Murph. I'm always smiling. All right. So you didn't ever you never told us what was uh, the big line for. It was or, for the, or it was did you for the fries. The fries. Yeah. Where where are ours? I mean, Mike said he was hungry. <laughs> They're on their way. I'm having them delivered up there. I promise. I don't. Are your fingers crossed? Let me see. I think it's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one ball and one strike to Danny Espinosa, who has scored a run. He's also struck out tonight. So we get a miss. One and two. Luke did a nice job there. I don't know. He didn't sound nervous at all. And the young kids are so savvy right now. So. 
microphones and cameras. Doesn't and phase it. Cell phones. And a strike three call. Espinosa's down looking. Two outs here in my the sixth. My two grandkids have been photographed already more than I have in my entire life. <laughs> Now Max Scherzer will be up for the third time. He has a two run double tonight. He's also grounded out to shortstop. Fastball and it's 0 and 1. Envisioning another double. Yeah, isn't, it, isn't that this? Isn't that the count that he roped a double yeah. on? <laughs> and that swing there is the same swing as he crushed a double <laughs> that one hopped the wall in right field. Ball is just in a different spot. You think you can figure this game out? You never can. Freddie Galvis ranges to his left. And Scherzer's retired. One, two, three. He almost ran right into Ryan Howard. We'll head to the bottom of the sixth inning. Speaking of Ryan Howard, he'll be up third. In the center. By W.B. Mason, you can't go wrong when you buy right. By Jefferson, call 1-800-JEP now or visit jefferson.edu. And by your Delaware Valley Honda dealers. Hurry to your local Del Valle Honda dealer or visit delvallehondadealers.com. Home half of the sixth inning, that's up 7-1. Max Scherzer has been uh, in total control tonight. Scherzer has uh, five strikeouts on the ball game. He's allowed the home run to rub. They'll face Odubel Herrera, Mike Hel Franco, and Ryan Howard. As we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. He really only has had one tense moment when uh, the first inning when Howard uh, just missed that fastball with two men on base. Yeah, and at that point it was a three-nothing lead. It's kind of what we talked about last night, even though it was a, a six-nothing lead, the Phillies had a chance to claw back, and Mike Hel Franco was unable to deliver. Now Odubel, who has walked tonight and grounded out. I do believe that they're sending somewhat of a message to Odubel. Yes, no, maybe so. Some of these inside pitches. Yeah, he, he just pulled that one pretty bad. 2-0. It's so predictable though. You get a fastball inside and then all of a sudden they come with an off speed pitch out over the plate. Broke his bat, obliterated his bat. And one away, Rendon makes the catch. 
guess he was I guess so Dubin was tired of those walks. <laughs> well it's time now for the Jeep stuff the fans trivia quiz answer. I think you guys may have this one. What team did Dusty Baker finish his playing career with. Well, well, I, I, I'm going to relay the relay the, Matt's the, answer. The, <laughs> he keeps saying you tell him you tell him. I have no idea but my buddy here says the A's the Oakland, the Oakland A's, A's is correct 85 86 log back on the Phillies dot com to find out if you're the winner of a Phillies prize pack. Yeah. As Michael Franco rolls one foul. Dusty Baker had a very good career Braves Dodgers. And of course the uh, Oakland A's. He played in Oakland about two years. Two years 85 and 86. Yeah. I forgot he played for the Giants in 84. Forgot all about that. Not that you weren't well aware of him with the Braves, but you were certainly well aware of him with the Dodgers. Yes. Oh, yes. Certainly was. <laughs> you know, our, our, our viewers out there. Might be wondering how Michael Franco is such a good hitter when he looks like he's stepping in the bucket. Particularly uh, the last week or so. That ball said sharply to third. Rendell makes a nice play and a strong arm picked out by Zimmerman. Two outs. That yeah, was a good play. I guess what I was trying to get you to say was it's because he keeps his hands back. He's got a good load. His foot comes down, his hands are going back. Take a young Smitty right there. Mm. Well, we've seen uh, Michael Franco do that a lot on defense. Nice play by Rendon. And, but, yeah, and I agree 100%. And, and a lot of times you watch him take the swing and his body never closes up, but his hands never move or leave that power position. Right. It's one thing with your body going and your hands go with it, but the fact that he might go and his hands stay there, and he's so strong. Just a bit inside, one ball and one strike. Well, Ryan's a hitter, but we were talking about Mikhail. Um, I think you and I both agree. I mean, he's going to be a great one, but he just gets a little over anxious and a little over aggressive and he gets a little mad. Um, let's that creep into his stroke like you know tonight kind of looks like you know he's been he's trying to hit the big you know yeah. try, he's big trying fly. to hit a six a six run home yeah run. and, and uh, that's you know a little bit of frustration. You know these at bats in games like this count just like any other you know you may not win the ball game but the at bats count. And that's why you got you know you got to commit yourself mentally to accept in the battle between you and the pitcher even though the score is seven to nothing. Right. You know within a framework of come from behind baseball as well you know which means sort of like well you look at Oduble breaking his bat on a two and oh fastball that was a ball the first hitter of this inning. Well should he have been taking there because he's leading off the inning and the only way we can get back in this ball game is if we get base runners and Somebody hits a big fly or something, and you know, before you know it, it's seven to four, and it's a new ball game. Or are you just, you know, do you just go for yourself because you know you're getting a two and zero fastball? Howard fouls it back. Is that hard to convince yourself of that? I think it, I think it comes with the, with the uh, the youth and what what how much experience you have in the big leagues. I think older players would take pitches. I think it comes down to where younger players need to. Uh, but say prove themselves or quote and impress people. Mm. That looked like a change up from Scherzer and I think it surprised Ryan Howard. It was called a strike even though he offered at it. We'll head to the seventh at seven one nationals on top.
one is kids <laughs> opening night here at Citizens Bank Park brought to you by Turkey Hill and it's time now for your Delaware Valley Honda dealers game summary three spot the first five spot in the first last night Noah lasted five allowed seven earned runs all right so the Phils have been outscored a little bit these last couple of games 16 to 2. Harry the K's where you don't have to be a kid you can be a kid of any age and go out there and enjoy some of the food a couple of the new items this year Michael Tower leads it off when Ben Revere went out with the quad injury Taylor took over as the leadoff hitter and Dusty Baker said to him I'm not concerned about you running deep counts as the leadoff hitter. Well, with that type of swing, I understand why. Yeah, that's a powerful swing. Yeah, so he he averages. You know, we talk about Odubel averaging almost five pitches per at bat, if not more. He averages about three. And Dusty said, "I don't care if you find a pitch you like. I want you to go after it." Because he's not a true leadoff hitter. Because he's not a true leadoff hitter. And that's what he did, as Mike alluded to uh, in the first inning last night. He found a pitch and he went right after it. This time he pops out to. Right field, one away, four in a row retired by Inahosa. So when Ben comes back, Michael goes back to being a reserve outfielder, basically. And, you know, he had such a good spring. Yes, that's probably what's going to happen, but he's probably going to see some time uh, in center field. Ben may not play every day. Well, and, and Jay and J Dub won't play every day. Night game, day game. Like I'd be surprised. Well, J Dub will probably play tomorrow because we're in Philadelphia, but. Don't takes a fastball for strike 0 and 1. So that's what it was has been it was quad quad. Oh I Correct. thought it was oblique. No quad injury. It's low 1 and 1. Although you think about it Revere is. not you know, he doesn't take a lot of pitches either. We saw that the last couple of years. He'll go after a fastball that he, he yep. likes. Yeah, but he also gets 185 hits. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> Off the mask of Cameron Rupp. Bryce Harper's on deck. Well, there aren't many real what would you call prototype leadoff hitters like in the old days. I agree you with know, that. I mean, I'll, I'll go right to Pete Rose where. You, you couldn't have had a better leadoff hitter. 200 hits, 100 walks. Two away. Bryce Harper's coming up. All right, so two home runs in the series. Last night a breaking pitch. Bam. Inside. You know, the hanging curveball who destroys the right field. And then, of course, tonight, back in the fifth inning, gets a fastball inside. I guess it was supposed to be away. He just pulled it back in the middle of the plate or in her third. And when you have that home run swing, Mike, you know better than anyone. When pitchers make mistakes, they pay for it. Well, I'll tell you, he he turned uh, the first one, the curveball we saw, and he turned what I wouldn't consider a mistake. And, you know, it was a get over curveball, right? It was, you know, it, it was, you know, strike one. I mean, uh, you won't find. I don't think. I don't think in 18 years I ever took a right handers curveball. Yeah, but that's a pretty good curveball because that's for in the heart strike of, one. Yeah, I mean, plate. you know, that just freezes me right away when it starts behind my body. But look, both swings, the finish, the exact same, same area. But you know, the swing is it has a little Mikhail Franco. We were same yep. thing we were talking about. The, 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 the foot, the front foot clears and, and, and actually has a little bit of a movement toward first base. But the hands stay back. The hands stay back. There is one key to hitting. It's that. Yep. You know, the hands stay back. No so balls and two strikes. They're going to go upstairs. And it's one and two. I mean, identical. You know, the early load, foot down. You know, and like Mike said, he kind of steps backwards when he hits. Watch his front foot go, step back. 
posting up that front it's, leg. It's, I mean, it's like a it's a it's like a mirror shot. Off the end of the bat and foul. And I think Bryce Harper, you know, I was not convinced when he first came into the league uh, that he was a player that he was built up to be. You know, I mean, all Sports Illustrated cover uh, monstrous home runs as a high school player, can't miss uh, on and on and on and on. And I, you know, I didn't see those kind of things out of him early in his career, the first couple of years. It was, there were some injuries, of course, but I think the buildup was so big. It was big that we, we expected so much from him, and he, he didn't deliver uh, right away. But now, now after last year, I think he has settled into superstar status. I mean, I believe he, he I think he believes it. I, I think he's uh, got a temperament about him that's uh, that's great. You know, he's a five-tool player, and he's uh, only 23. Right. He goes out there every day. Um, Cesar will backhand Harper. is retired. He hustles. He was hustling there. Six in a row retired by Inahosa will stretch here at Citizens Bank Park. It sure is, and that's not easy. You got to watch the ball into your glove. You're throwing from down under, Laredo, as we used to call it. Of course, you get Ryan Howard make a nice pick over there, nice little cheat move we call it, and he's one of the best I've ever seen at barehanding. And there's a guy that's wearing a smart jersey, <laughs> <laughs> and that also nice, was nice the Hyundai <laughs> defense, Hyundai defensive play of the game. If you saw it, Mike, when you were chatting, we, we did see a stairs jersey there too. <laughs> Matt, are you giving those out? I miss it. That's the <laughs> the one. <laughs> the one. <laughs> well, Scherzer tonight: 49 fastballs, 15 changeups, 12 sliders, three cut fastballs. Darren Ruff will be the batter. Ruff is 0 for 2. He takes a strike. It's 0 and 1. Yep, there he is. There is the one. My brother. <laughs> what a two. Darren, uh, one for 10 so far after a good spring. Pretty good chance he'll be at first base tomorrow. It's a good take right there. It's a tough changeup. What do you call it? The bat avoider? The bat misser. Or the bat misser. <laughs> this is the lane changer. It did change a lane. You wonder about rough shoulder where he had the uh, rotator cuff. Uh, soreness. Pete Buchanan said today he's 100%. Good. Now, hopefully, they give Darren a chance to go. I mean, it's a tough draw right now. But give him like four or five games in a row. 
get his timing back. And Darren has the type of the type of swing that he doesn't really lose his timing a lot because he doesn't have a lot of movement. He's so strong and he uses his hands so well. That one's the opposite way toward the corner. It'll slice out of play. Well, Pete kind of echoed that same thing, Matt. He said he needs to get him, you know, where he his swing is comfortable. So if he doesn't play, he's got ten at bats. Yeah, it's it's amazing, man, honestly. Well, that goes to show you they'll throw anything at any time nowadays. Seven oh, yeah. lead. Max Scherzer, three and two slider. Well, it's a 95 mile an hour heater, and Scherzer picks up a another strikeout. It's a little cheese right there. It is. It's 95. Bottom of the seventh, you're throwing 95 on your 95th pitch. Sounds yeah. like Vince Velasquez in New York yeah. the other day. 95 on his 95th pitch. Galvis uh, takes inside. It's 1 0. Speeds for his pitches. Scherzer's a big numbers guy too, and he he credits his late brother for getting him into the numbers and what they mean from a baseball standpoint, and he uses them. You go back and study the numbers and what certain guys are hitting, what he's throwing, the effectiveness of the way he's throwing. There's so much at it at the disposal from a scouting standpoint. Yeah. Freddy toward the hole and off the glove of Murphy. And Galvis will have a hit. Good for Freddie. He could use that one. Two for 14 on the homestand. And picks up a one out single. Well, Freddie's going to absolutely love. The lip of the grass in the outfield. They hit that bump right over top of the glove. There's a little smirk right there and a smile. It must be cool to be able to watch the replays up there. On, on, <laughs> it involves you, you know, either your hitter, defensive player. Watch it right, right there. And it yeah, pops up yeah, over. yeah, yeah. Almost hit him in the head. <laughs> so we'll give that a check mark. <laughs> Cabra at Homer is last time up. He has struck out. Fouls it away. Here is that home run. That ball, that, that ball was a little higher than the other one. It was. You could just convince Cameron that that downswing, that trying to drive the ball down levels your bat out. And quickens it up. You'd like to have that one back. Hector warming up with the bullpen. Hector Naris. Shallow center field and Daniel Murphy the second baseman is there here comes Taylor who slides and can't come up with it. And Galvis is safe at second base that'll be a base hit for Ruff. Galvis did a great job because it looked like that ball was going to be caught twice either by Murphy or Taylor so he didn't go all the way. He froze and then still was short enough from the bag to then get there without a problem. Well, so many times as a, as a base runner, you take it for granted, and all of a sudden you get out there. You watch Freddie is getting out here. He's reading the play. He's watching the ball. He's watching the center fielder. He doesn't start going back towards first. His momentum stops, but he still has a good read. Be able to get to second base very easily. Very good pickup on your part, Tom, and a very good job of base running. Well, here's Cedric Cutter. Cedric takes it. A little high. It's one and zero. Oh. And another knock for Cameron Rowe. Gotta get this guy going here. Oh, I gotta use that hand. Top hand. 
Stay out of the air, hit a line drive, left center, right center. Sharply to the right side, but Murphy is there. Throws to first, so they get Cedric Hunter. The runners do move up, but Andres Blanco is going to come up to pitch hit for the Phillies with two men down. Well, I know Cedric Hunter had a tough day today. So far, he's got three ground outs to second base. Oh, I'm sorry, he had two ground outs to, to no, but they were, they were on the right, on the right side. side. Yeah. The right. Yep. Two shifts. But at least he's hitting the ball on the ground. He's hitting the ball hard on the ground. It's a lot better than seeing the weak fly ball to left field. So are you happy with the 0 for 3 so far? No, but baby steps means that you're getting on top of the ball. You're starting to use your top hand, and you're starting to the ball, as Mike says, down on the ball and getting that little backspin. I, I'd rather see that than the weak fly ball in the infield. Oh, the weak fly ball to the outfield. Yeah, I, I was going to say it's the worst thing. I guess maybe the rollover ground ball, <laughs> the breaking ball is bad too. Yeah, the three but I tell you, that, that weak fly ball to the opposite field is dead. You know, that's a chicken wing swing. You know, by that I mean that the, the weak fly ball to the opposite field is hands committed early. And you push the ball to the opposite field up in the air. That's what we talked about earlier in the season about the basketball swing. You take the swing and you put the basketball right between the arms. That's another good one. You've come up with some good ones tonight. Thanks. Shoot. That's a good changeup. Pitchers should change their tune a little bit when those earned runs are out there. No matter what the score is. Ninety-seven. See, that was pretty cagey by Scherzer there too. He held the ball for a long time, tried to get the hitter a little bit antsy, you know, and he had to stand there. Static for so long, I'd have called timeout right there. Might not have got it, but I'd have called it. And then threw the fastball. Yeah. 97. <laughs> and why he was angry because he got a fastball to hit, and he stepped up and he said something, but he told the umpire, "No, that was a good pitch. I'm mad at myself." In the dirt, backhanded by Ramos. I'll tell you what, that was a lucky backhand by Ramos. And then on second and third, yeah, I'll tell you, in a close ball game, he better be moving that body a little bit to block that ball, right? I agree. Yeah, he took a, the bounce was perfect for him. Well, this is the longest inning for Scherzer as far as pitches go. This will be the 21st that he's thrown tonight in this inning. Jason Worth is out there. And that'll do it for the Phils in the seventh. They threaten, get a couple in scoring position. Do not score. We'll move to the eighth at 7 1, Washington.
Baseball is brought to you by the Pennsylvania Lottery. Play the new instant game, Escape from Margaritaville. Players must be 18 or older. Please play responsibly. By Chevrolet, visit your local dealer at ChevyDealer.com. And by Xfinity. Xfinity X1 will change the way you experience TV. That was number 527 to right center. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what is that picture? Uh, it's well, a, I think it's, it's not Murph. It's all part of the Authentics collection oh. here at uh, Citizens really? Bank Park. There's the moonshot. Yes, sir. I was watching. Me too. Jumping <laughs> up and down. How far did you think you hit that ball? You it's you not how far you hit it. Just it's how. It's, <laughs> it's how often you hit it far. <laughs> you know that commercial. About, have you seen the commercial about it's not how fast you cut your grass or whatever. You know? Right. I, I just saw it the other day actually. <laughs> Here's Hector Neris. It is. I didn't mean to six to answer your question for you. Well, you did. It perfect, sounded perfect like a commercial. <laughs> the collectibles uh, store here at Citizens Bank Park collectible stand. They have some great things. There we go. All right, so I, I, I'm, I'm thinking it's an Ernie Banks jersey up to the right, a Reggie Jackson Yankee jersey, number 44. Look at all the baseballs they have down there. You guys missing any baseballs to add to your collection? No, but there's one of the all time great right there Ken Griffey Jr. Mariners jersey. The old school Phillies. Huh. So we get a miss, one and one. Good job by Inahosa. Six up, six down. And his outing. Neris came right in and threw a little up and in to Zimmerman. I like that. Oh, he's got a good one. Yes. Good, uh, what do they call it? Split? No. Fork? Uh, no. Oh. The bat <laughs> misser. <laughs> The bat <laughs> Like, well, you know what that's called. We got to get this terminology down. That's the bat right <laughs> there. There it is. Trickling out in front of uh, Cameron Rook. And one away here in the eighth inning. And out goes two to three. Hector's pitched well. He's had some bat missers. It is. Did you see right? This is where you want it. That's that's the bat It Just drops off the table. And he throws a lot of them. Daniel Murphy's one for three. There was a story about, uh, I guess about five years ago, four years ago, about Hector, where they said he was labeled as the happiest man in baseball. I will say that he is a very happy guy. And he says hi to you every single day. He stops. And looks you in the eye and says, How are you today? He goes out of his way. But let me ask you this question though. If you're in the big leagues playing in a big league ballpark every day, yeah. you should be happy. I right? would agree. <laughs> Wouldn't you agree? I would agree. To but you know, uh, you don't have to smile every minute to be happy. People a lot of times right. equate it's smiling true. with happiness. Is that Am I, does that make any sense? I, uh, yes. Yeah, does. I'm very happy, but I don't have a, you know. You're a, smiling a, now. Because <laughs> he's that hard time explaining what he's talking about. <laughs> Two outs. Another great. I know what you finger. mean about Hector, but he, he could be a little intimidating when you first look at him, right? I would I would agree with that. Yes. You, you're wondering if he's happy. <laughs> well, I, I tell you, he, he's pissed very well this year. He's very sneaky, but this is the equalizer right here. Look how much movement there is. Bad avoider. It went the other way, it went sideways. <laughs> oh, he didn't. He... <laughs> J Dubs just talking to everybody. <laughs> Off the end of the bat foul, it's one and one. <laughs> Field, Cedric Hunter. Oh, 
will make the catch. And it's a one, two, three, eighth inning. So nine face, nine retires for the Phillies bullpen onto the bottom of the eighth inning. Phillies trail it by six. After the game, stick around because we'll break down tonight's game and hear from Pete McCannon only on Cure Auto Insurance presents Phillies Post Game Live. Bottom half of the eighth inning, and the Phillies trail at 7 1. 9 1 last night, 7 1 here tonight. Matt Belial will come out of the bullpen for the Nationals, the veteran right hander. So far in two games. He's pitched just an inning and a third. And he will face Cesar Hernandez, Odubel Herrera, Michael Franco. So Scherzer goes seven. He allows five hits and one run. One walk and seven strikeouts. Look out. Wow. Gentleman put his hand up to stop the ball, not catch it. He just was trying to stop it. I think he was saving the young lady. Somebody get him a bag of ice, maybe a baseball as a souvenir. I mean, that ball was smoked into the crowd, and he literally just put his hand up not to catch it. He may have tried to catch it, but just to really knock it down so it wouldn't hit anybody. Fly ball center field, Taylor. Who doesn't have to move all that far. With one out, Odubel Herrera's coming up. Time for the Major League Notebook. Murph, take it away, buddy. All right, thank you very much, Tom. Well, how about what Jake Arrieta is doing in Chicago? He had eight scoreless innings again today at Wrigley, and that uh, now brings his scoreless streak at home to a staggering 48 and two thirds innings. The last time a team scored a run against Arietta at Wrigley Field was back when the Phillies played uh, the Cubs on July 25th of last year. Brian Howard hit that solo home run. Cole Hamels threw the no hitter. That was the last time he lost at Wrigley Field and the last time he allowed a run. 48 and two thirds innings. And also uh, some other good pitching news. Uh, King Felix, Felix Hernandez out there in Seattle. 2,162 career strikeouts in a Mariners uniform that ties Randy Johnson for the franchise high. That is your Major League Notebook tonight, you guys. Thank you, Murph. We appreciate that. You know, I think he'll stick around Seattle longer than Randy did. I, I mean, we don't see a lot of the Mariners games because we're on the East Coast. I mean, we tr I try to watch as many as I can, but that guy is just a machine out there with, when it comes to strikeouts. What was he like to face, Matt? Did you ever face him? Yeah, and it wasn't fun. Uh, it, for the being thrown very hard, two having great stuff, he's mean. He's not afraid to knock you down. He knows home plate. 
it's his. And if you're going to get a knock, you have to earn it. So he's not afraid to knock you down. He pitches it, he doubles up, he triples up. And he has overpowering stuff. No wonder I was over. <laughs> <laughs> One and two to Oduble. Seattle so far this year is uh, four and six. Actually, they get five and six because they won today. Little day baseball up in the Bronx against the Yankees. Uh, and then in that game, Sabathia pitched for the Yankees, so he's uh, he's thrown pretty well. And that ball is past Rendon down the left field line. And Odubel scatters to second. He's there with his first double of the year. And he's a doubles machine. Well, it's good hitting there. Doug Dupel uses the whole field. That's why he's going to be a 300 hitter someday. Especially when he learns to keep loving those walks. So what will the walks give him? As far as you say that'll help him be a 300. Why would that help him be a 300? Limit the number of plate appearances down, get him on base, make him a little tougher to face. Well, like you said earlier, look at today. If he didn't walk his first to bat, he's one for four. Now instead, he's one for three. Right. Okay. With a walk. Well, you see a lot. Uh, you see a lot more pitching. When you walk a lot, it means you're waiting and waiting on the ball and identifying the ball. You, you know what I mean? So you're yes. you're. You're laying off of pitches that might be out pitches. Does that make sense? Yep. You know, the percentages work more into your favor when you understand the value of the walk, not only to your team and scoring runs and the hitters behind you, but to you as a hitter being selective on pitches. One on to Franco. Ball outside. I think ball I think strike. it's one of the most underrated stats in our sport. The base on balls. I would agree. And pitches per at bat. A lot of times, pitches per at bat are influenced by. Taking the two and zero oh fastball, taking the one and zero oh fastball, you know, taking the three and one fastball. When they're good pitches to hit, it's just you know you you you, you, you subscribe to that old money ball theory of running pitch counts up and uh, just a general uh, lackadaisical approach to a hitter's count. I don't ever agree with that. I don't either. That's that's the count that. Joey Votto from Cincinnati. Oh wins. yeah, that's ridiculous. Two zero three one. He won't swing. It's all. I mean, you know, Wade Boggs was a little like that too, right? Now, Wade Boggs wasn't a run producer, so to speak. I mean, he was a high Table setter. Yeah, he was a high bat. He was a guy that knew how to work a batting average, right? And I'm not saying that with disrespect. He was a one-two hitter in the lineup. His job was to get on base, even though he wasn't a speed demon. But he knew the value of the base on balls. Over the left side, it may have been ball four, dug out by Zimmerman. Two away with a runner at second base. Two nice picks today for Zimmerman at first base. You know, he made the move over to first, uh, partly because of his shoulder. His throws just wasn't making throws from third base. He did win a gold glove over at third. There's some that think he's going to win a gold glove at first base. Oh, I thought, I thought again, I thought he was had one of the best set, set, best set of hands. I mean, he, he could catch a, he could catch an awkward hop better than anybody I'd ever seen at third base. Perfect technique right there. So his fielding percentage last year as a first baseman was 995. I mean, there's a lot of action going on over there. He had four errors. But 995 fielding percentage at first as Howard takes. Well, you, you take a middle infielder and, and put him at first base, and once you get used to the, the glove and, you know, the, the footwork around the bag and all that, I mean, it should be a cakewalk to be a good first baseman. Pops it up. 
Shallow left Rendon running back worth coming in and Rendon makes the catch. Phillies get one in scoring position. They've had three runners in scoring position the last two innings but are unable to push a run across the plates. We'll head to the ninth. Time now for our WB base of delivery of the game. We've showed you this a uh, handful of times. We have. We, <laughs> we came back in the fifth inning. Fastball away. It was supposed to be. Came back inside the fastball inside. And he crushes it to right field. That is your WB Mason delivery of the game. You know, I don't think he got all that ball. No, I don't either. I mean, it, I'm serious. That that ball only no, went like I four, 20 rows saying, up. Yeah. Now, if you would have got it all, it would have gone foul. It, it, or it would have went off the Comcast Sportsnet, the, the, the CSN Philly. I don't know about that far, but it's going over that Bud, <laughs> over that Budweiser sign. Because that that I mean that was right in the wheelhouse, perfect, like on a tee. They have broken the the seat out there, though. I give him 102 on his young career. 102. Yeah, I, I don't want to disrespect uh, Aaron Noel by any means by saying that, but I mean, we were just talking about showing the uh, delivery of the game there, and I mean, every now and then the hitter gets one right where he likes it, you know. Most of the time we pop it up. <laughs> Ramos hits one toward the hole. Galvis cuts it off. Get away. Yes, but on the, on the other hand, too, though, if you ask Aaron Nola about that pitch, he's going to say, yeah, I, he should hit it because I missed my spot. Yeah, but man, pitch, you know, pitchers all, don't always hit their spot, as you know. Oh, that's true. Right? In but, fact, in fact, most of the time they probably miss their spot. And they hope they don't, when they miss their spot, it's not over the middle of the plate, <laughs> right? But um, we usually make an out, right? I mean, we usually hit it. That's most of the time. You know, if if we got a hit every time a pitcher misses spot, we'd hit 500. This, this is where you're set up right here. This is where the ball finishes up. There's well, you, you know, Cedric Hunter will track that one down. Sorry, guys. You're right. He did miss his spot. And, you know. And but I, but I understand, I, and I agree. And I understand what you're saying about missing your spot and not always are guys going to hit the ball in the ballpark. But for a guy who has that type of swing for that fastball inside in that happy zone area. Now I'm not talking happy Gilmore. I'm talking about happy Harper. <laughs> he gets that fastball in that area or off speed. He usually doesn't miss that pitch. And in there we showed the, the, that replay right there. Well I'll tell you what that particular miss of location. Is very vulnerable <laughs> to oh, something yeah. being hit hard, right? I mean, if you were if you were aiming for the inside corner and missed on the outside corner, the odds aren't as high that it would be hit hard. Good wow. point. Very good point. Sean Kelly warming up in the bullpen for Washington. 
Don't see Pap, who's got the sweatshirt on there, leaning to the side. Or Oliver Perez, the lefty. There's Pap and Oliver Perez sitting next to him. Pap looks excited. He hasn't blinked yet. So, uh, when was the last time Pap worked? Uh, he, yeah, I think he worked the. Uh, I want to say the last game before the, before we came here. Before they came here against the. 413. So that was the Wednesday before they came here. Hmm. And the reception for him here will be. Uh, it's going to be pretty thick with booze. Heisey slices one the opposite way, and it is gone. Great catch by that young man as Chris Heisey gets his first home run of the year. Man, that's a heck of a home run trot right there. Full speed. Speeding around the bases. Heisey uh, lives about two hours from here in Philadelphia, so he's got some friends and family who get a chance to watch him play here. I'll tell you, I marvel at a, at a pinch hitter. Come off the bench. The entire game and line a home run to the opposite field. That's pretty remarkable. Taylor takes a breaking ball. See pulling a one, run. pulling a home run. <laughs> Seriously. I'm more impressed with that, that play by the right fielder <laughs> or the guy in the stands. I know you've hit a lot of pinch hit home runs and a lot of you know regular lineup home runs in your career, but. It, do you have, can you remember one you lined out the opposite field as a pinch hitter? I don't think I've ever remember you hitting anything to the opposite field. <laughs> <laughs> hey, seven hits one year to left. Um, Fastball in the inside corner. You can think about that. Oh, actually, Matt. Yeah, I did. I hit a 3 0 pinch hit home running as Tom Charlton down the left field line. Wow. Just inside the fair pole, foul pole. What was the weather like that day? Well, Pretty California good memory. Perfect. Steel trap down there. 8 1 Nationals on top. We'll go to the bottom of the night. StubHub Mother's Appreciation Day will be Sunday, May 1st. It's a special 235 first pitch. The Phillies Infinity Scarf, free to all women 15 and older. All part of that Indians weekend. 29th, 30th, and the 1st. This will be Sunday, May 1st. Tickets can be purchased by going to phillies.com. I mentioned this last night, but the Phillies are on the road for an extended period of time before that, and then an extended period of time after that. So, good weather. Celebrate. Mother's Day a little early. Here's Sean Kelly, fifth game for Kelly. Two and two thirds so far. And he's on the face. Darren Ruff, Freddie Galvis, Cameron Ruff. Darren is 0 for 3. He struck out a couple of times. Takes on the inside corner. It's 0 and 1. This series will wrap up tomorrow. It'll be Gio Gonzalez on the mound. A 
against Charlie Morton. Please hope that Morton's as good as he was the tomorrow as he was the other day. Here's Geo. An old school chart. Comcast Sportsnet at 1:30. Big Sunday show kicks us off at one as Ruff is struck out. I guess you don't normally see that in chart anybody charting anymore like that. Not very often. You think that's his own personal way of scouting? Yeah, it, it, it could be. It's kind of different though. You have a left-hander scouting a right-handed pitcher. But it also might keep him more focused into the game and get a better idea of you know, what hitters are attacking early in the count and what they're going after late in the count. To the right side again for Galvis and another base hit for him. Well, for him individually, that's yeah. a nice way to end the night with two base hits that's to the right, right side. That's a good sign. Freddie was struggling, and uh, maybe that'll get him going. Two base hits in the exact same spot. Emma Ruff can have a night here. There it is, two for three. The home run singled his last time on a bloop out to center. With one man down, he waits for Kelly. And Kelly. Throws him something a little softer. And it's 0 1. The first slider was pitch you probably aren't going to hit hard. First pitch slider on the outside corner. The second slider is very hittable. That one gets away from Ramos. Galvis will go to second base. So this this is the bat right here. Excuse me that we, we talk about don't give it a bat away. And even though he's having a couple of big swings so far, yes, you're two for three, you have a home run. You could have a tremendous day going three for four for another home run. But take what the pitcher gives you right now. First two swings, a little over, over swinging. Be happy with hitting a line drive to right field for a base hit. We're talking about baby steps. You know, and you're probably thinking in his mind, if I get a knock here, maybe I'll play again tomorrow. Tucci's well, probably going to play tomorrow because it's a day game. Those kind of thoughts, though, I would imagine creep into the minds of players more often than not when he's down looking on strikes. You think? I, I can only imagine. Look, I mean, if you're not playing every day, yes, no? I mean, would it creep into your head? I think you're asking I, I, the wrong guy. I, I, I don't think. <laughs> Matt, I don't think. Play every day. I think you're asking the wrong guy there. <laughs> Why, man? But you I, knew I, where you were penciled in at. Well, I don't think those kind of thoughts are are in in their heads the, nowadays. Okay. So, yeah, I. Um, you have to be a real thought. unique hitter in today's generation to have to, to to employ that kind of thinking. I'm not giving in that that away. I don't care what the score is. This guy's not, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think it's just, I think it, and, and it's just, I don't know. I, I'm not saying with disrespect, it's just the nature of the beast nowadays. They, they, they are, they're programmed into their own pretty much swings and strokes, and, and I don't know that there's adjustments going on as the game flows. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, yeah, and I'm not saying that that Cameron was giving him a bat away because he still had the aggressive swing. And, and listen, the big man above knows I gave plenty of bats away, and that's one thing I talked about yesterday. If I had one thing to take back, oh, in we my all, career, we all did. Yeah, you know, and it's all, tough. We all did, and you know there there are guys we know names from, from our eras when we played of guys that just looked like guys that never gave an at bat away, but. You know what? And they were generally. The, 
they would generally uh, set the table average hitters you know most of us guys that popped the ball out of the ballpark every now and then gave a lot of them away. <laughs> Well, Cedric Hunter's down on strikes to wrap up tonight's ball game as the Phils leave one in scoring position. The Phillies have left uh, four in scoring position the last three innings of this game, and they lose it by a final score of eight to one. Our Chevrolet player of the game, even with all the offense, we'll give it to a guy that provided some offense and also pitched pretty well. And that's Max Scherzer. Yeah, he threw very well. It just he has that uh, an extra dial. He can turn up the fastball 97. He can hit. He got his first knock of the year, which that, I think was a huge knock. Yeah, that was the biggest knock of the game, no doubt about. It. Went from a three nothing lead to a five nothing lead. lead. But he mixed in a lot of cutters, a lot of fastballs, kept the hitters off balance, and late movement right there against Ryan Howard. Elevated fastball versus Darren Ruff. That's why he's your Chevrolet player of the game. Yeah, he moved it around. He threw five pitches tonight and five effective pitches tonight. Nationals take the first two games of the series. They win it tonight by a final score of eight to one. We'll be back to wrap it up right after this.